pres praises it. Um, that's great. It, it really is. It solidifies those skills, but it doesn't give a therapist uh, any tools for how do you get the skills that, that aren't happening. If they never give a label praise, I never get to say great label praise. And so I don't have a way to get that, that new skill in. Um, and so um, what the coach system does is help evaluate the richness of CDI coaching to help us move from that good behavior description, good label praise, good, good, um, and how to strengthen um, the parent skills that aren't occurring at a sufficient rate. Okay, so whew, I'm checking my time. Now I'm going to tell you the things that, that that's background on the coaching system and the purposes of it. Now I'm going to start to tell you what's in the coaching system. Okay. And we started out with four skills that are essential in, in our belief, and we call them the gateway skills. If you don't meet all four of these criteria, pacing, accuracy, positive tone, and specificity, your coaching is not going to be considered at mastery. Okay, let me tell you what those things are. Um, pacing is really just the total number of coaching statements the coach makes in a set period of time, um, leaving out things that are wrong, coaching errors or irrelevant things. And what it is is just to, a measure of is the coach talking enough to develop a rhythm um, with the client and to give sufficient feedback so that it, it presents them the opportunity to advance their skills. Our criteria um, that we've been using and all the, the work um, I've been talking about is at least 35 coaching statements in a five minute period. With the current work we're doing, I, I am gonna tell you right now, I think 30 is a better number. I started to change the slide, but I thought my co-authors might kill me. Um, and so around 30 to 35. What I can tell you informally is that um, we did over 100 coding clips and independent observers agreed that if there were 20 or fewer statements in every time, that was uh, uh, inadequate. If you measure a group of advanced or level one therapists, they tend to give anywhere between 40 and 45 statements in a five minute period. If you look at um, master trainers, they tend to give anywhere from 50 up, upwards of even 70, um, a lot of quick, small things. So the, the more um, skilled you are, probably the more you say. And um, new trainees are usually somewhere around mm, 20 to 25. And so I think 30 is a, is a nice, 30 to 35 is a, a nice place to be um, that we're looking for. The next thing, so are they talking enough? Is the pace good? Next thing, is it accurate? The words that you're saying need to be correct. Um, and so um, we need to be giving accurate feedback. Um, our criteria there is that in a five minute period, we want to have three or fewer coaching errors. And I'll tell you what coaching errors are as we, as we roll along. Um, but so, so you're, you're talking enough, that's pacing. You are accurate in what you say. You're not making coaching errors. The third thing is it needs to be positive in tone. And we just look at the total praise that the, the therapist gives in a period of time. The idea is that that will strengthen rapport with the parent and their receptiveness to your coaching, as well as strengthening, reinforcing the, the um, desired skills that we want to see. What we look for is a minimum of 10 praises, praises of any kind, labeled or unlabeled, at least 10 times in five minutes that the coach is um, praising that parent. And then the next thing we want to look at is um, specificity. Of course, we're PCIT therapists. It's not enough just to praise. We want label praise. And so we say that um, they, it needs to be um, at least half of the praise 
that the therapist gives is label praise. Not only does that make your coaching specific so the parent will know what behaviors to, to reproduce exactly, it also is modeling for the parent, just like we don't want them giving only unlabeled praises, we don't want our therapist to give only unlabeled praises. Okay, so those are your four gateway skills. It's necessary for a good coach in this system to talk enough, to speak accurately, to have a positive tone, and to make their praise specific. Then we look at a, a, another set of, of qualitative um, things that are the stylistic features. So it's not a pass-fail kind of things. It's just looking at the, the richness of your coaching. So it breaks down the coaching skills a little bit more specifically. It helps therapists examine and refine their style, sort of. You might change your style for different clients, um, and, and so it just helps make coaches aware of, of what they're doing. And we evaluate people on seven stylistic features, and our, our goal for mastery is that they're getting four out of seven. It's not necessary for everybody to do all seven all the time, although some people do, um, but it's, it's just allowing your style. These are what the seven things are that we look at. Praise for other greater than two times and greater than or equal to two times in five minutes. That means praising for something besides the, the three core 10, 10, 10 skills. So maybe you're praising um, their, their warmth and affection, their, their nice natural tone, their good judgment, um, the, ability, the, the willingness to follow the child's lead, the way they're bringing their questions down. Any, something other than just the good behavior description, good label praise. Uh, so, because you know as, uh, that a good PCIT therapist doesn't only look at the skills, they're also looking at the warmth and the quality of the interaction. We um, look at when the coach misses praising a um, spontaneous pride skill on the part of the parent. So if they give a great label praise all on their own, We'd like the coach to acknowledge that. Do they have to acknowledge it 100% of the time? No. So we're looking at that at least half of the time they're acknowledging that. Um, and then we look for contingent praise. So there's praise when the parent generates it on their own, a spontaneous skill. And then other times we're asking the parent to produce a skill. Like if I say, please reflect back what she said. If the parent does reflect that back. They just complied with my my prompt, and I want to recognize that. That sets up a better coaching interaction. Um, line feeds. We don't want the coach to be saying all the words. Um, we want the parent to be generating their own words. So we look at, did the coaching statements, um, we want a quarter or less, 25% or fewer of the total coaching statements to be direct line feeds. Um, we want to look at if they're doing things like describing the child or describing the parent, describing a skill. We'll talk about this more as we go. I'll, I'll identify them to be, um, that's another thing that adds to richness. Constructive feedback when you say, watch, watch that question. Um, when you give them feedback on the don't skills, we don't want too much of that. And so we look for that to be 10% or less of total coaching statements. And then there's what we call higher order um, statements, which I'll define for you. We want to have a nice dose of higher order statements. Okay? So we look at the positive things we want coaches to do and at the things we want coaches to avoid. Pretty much just like a CDI coding sheet looks, right, where you have the things you're trying to get them to do and you have the things you're trying to get them um, to do less of. Okay, so let's talk about higher order statements. Um, the, it underscores the purpose of CDI. It's not just a set of skills we want to do. There's a reason we're doing it. Um, and it might reference the underlying rationale or the theory for PCIT. It links what the parent is doing to what effect that's going to have on the child-parent relationship. 
Here's some examples. Um, you're describing is helping her focus. Excellent label praise. That would be a label praise. That makes the play so warm. So <coughs> your praises make the play warm at linking the skill to the effect. Okay. You ignored that annoying behavior, so he stopped doing it and came back to play with you. Those are higher order statements, ones that link the skill the parent is using to the effect. Higher order statements sometimes might convey information about child development. They might reference learning principles. They um, might link what the parent's doing to the broader treatment goals. So um, you might say something like, it's very typical for three-year-olds to ask lots of questions, developmental information. He looked at you when he threw that toy to see how you would react. So again, trying to explain the theory of what we're doing. We're going to ignore that. It will likely stop with ignoring. We'll monitor it and assess it in the next phase if it continues. That's a higher order. You might notice any coding geeks out there, that's actually coding two sentences as one higher order statement. Um, as you know, it's really, really hard to put a higher order statement in a very short amount of words. And so we code that as a conceptual unit. And we have examples of that in um, our little brief manual. Okay, so higher order. Another thing that we're looking for, as I mentioned before, but didn't really um, define for you, descriptions of the parent, descriptions of the child, and descriptions of the skill or the toy or the situation. Um, it just is describing features of the current interaction without reaching that extra level that makes it higher order, without tying it to the effects or, or rationale. Um, some examples might, when we describe what's happening, a lot of times it's a way to prompt the parent to, to do it. It kind of sets the stage for them to give a good spontaneous go without exactly telling them what to say. Let's look at some examples. Oh, she's sharing nicely. So I'm just describing the child. Oftentimes a parent will follow that with a label praise. Thank you for sharing. So it just sets the stage. Um, you can describe the parent. I see the enthusiasm on your face. Um, you're really keeping him interested. You can describe, again, the child's um, response to treatment. He's handling his frustration better today. Um, you can describe, sometimes you're just describing the skills. That was an unlabeled praise. Um, I think those blocks are a good choice for her. So sometimes you're just, just defining the situation, but descriptions about what's going on. Um, and to say a little bit more about higher order versus descriptions. Again, I think I already said this, that the higher order explicitly associates the skills with behavior change and reinforces that the parent's efforts are the mechanism for change. They are making this change by doing these skills. Um, and descriptions is a nice way to help bring to the parent's attention all the good things that are happening and to, to direct their attention. Okay, so um, these are kind of going in order of complexity, I think, of what you're doing. The higher order stuff would be the highest form of interpretation than describing the situation. Another thing that, probably the thing that we PCIT coaches do the most of is label praise. Um, so um, it, label praise is just a positive evaluation for the use of the targeted CDI skills. We set aside, that's the, the real goal, your fundamental goal as a CDI coach is to get your family to CDI mastery um, in, in the most efficient way possible. And CDI mastery means they're giving 10 behavior descriptions, 10 reflections, and 10 label praises in a five-minute period. So a lot of your coaching is going to go towards reinforcing them for doing those behaviors. Um, it includes contingent praise. If I tell them, say a label praise, and they say a label praise, and I say, great job saying a label praise, that's contingent praise. If I tell them to do something, and I praise them, we, we uh, 
can group that together, all praise. Um, wonderful behavior description. So that's a label praise of a behavior description. That's great how you made that a label praise, a label praise of a label praise. You have to twist your mind a little bit because it's we're so used to coding what the parent says, coding what the parent says, coding what the parent says. Here you have to sh shift your um, background and you're, you're coding what the coach says. Okay. Um, here's one where the therapist prompts. Um, you found the cow. So the parent, the, the coach just fed a line to the parent. The parent repeated it. You found the cow. And then here's um, contingent praise. Excellent behavior description. Okay. Um, besides praising the parent for saying those three skills, behavior description, reflection, label praise, we also want to praise the parent for um, additional things for things besides those basic three. Um, uh, so qualitative aspects, their imitation, their enjoyment, um, their warmth, their timing, their, their patience, um, it, any number of things. Great timing on that reflection. Excellent way to teach counting. Um, nice job mixing all the skills together, all, all sorts of things. Good, good job catching that question. So we're praising them for things other than just those three. It makes the coaching less robotic and also pays attention to the qualitative aspects of the relationship. Okay? Um, and again, we're modeling um, with our, our label praises. Um, so... Again, it pays attention to the specific um, mastery skills and to the general quality skills. Okay. Um, is it okay for uh, coaches to give unlabeled praise? Absolutely. Um, one thing I've noticed in looking as, at master coaches is that they tend to give a lot of unlabeled praises. Just the thing is, is that they give far more labeled. So sometimes you'll put together little, um, you'll hear things like, um, oh, that was a great behavior description. So that's a label praise of a behavior description, just perfect, followed by a quick unlabeled praise. Um, so that happens a lot, nothing wrong with it. Um, so it's positive, nonspecific statement to the parent. Um, great job, super, um, good job, mom. That, that kind of stuff. There's the one how I was talking about how we'll link them sometimes. Nice work. Perfect label praise. Sometimes it buys you time as a, as a new coach particularly. Rather than be silent, give an unlabeled praise while you're trying to think of the specific label praise. You're in your head trying to think, what statement did you, they just make? I don't want to be inaccurate. It's fine. Just say, great job. It lets them know they're on the right track. Um, Rationale for coding on label prices, it feels good. Um, and it also um, helps, as I said, sometimes as a new coach or a, any coach, you're just kind of tracking where you are, and that gives you an opportunity to raise your game. Okay? So those are all the things we praise parents for the things they've done. But again, what if I've got that family that's 7777? I need to get them to do this skill in order to be able to praise it or give a wonderful higher order interpretation about it. Um, so how am I going to get it? So prompt skills are what we call a question or a command intended to elicit one of the specific three CDI targeted skills, a label praise, a behavior description, or a reflection. Okay, and it's to get them to do it using their own words. Um, We'll talk about this just a little bit. So it might sound like a command. If I say, say, thank you for sharing. Okay, I know if we're doing DPIX, right, that's a direct command. But in this coding system, that's going to be considered um, a prompt skill because we set aside prompting for those three things. Okay. Um, so describe what she's doing with her hands. That's a prompt skill. Um, the parent says, good job, and you say, good job of, that's a prompt skill. Um, 
uh, you're so sweet, therapist says four. That's prompting them to make that into a label praise. Can you reflect just what, um, what he just said? So that's prompting for a reflection. Okay. Um, and again, I know I'm flying through these things, although I hope I'm flying fast enough um, so that we can have a chance to work with it a little bit because that's what makes it make sense. Um, the rationale for prompt skills is that it's getting the parent to use their own voice rather than you telling them words to say. Um, so it's, it's nudging them towards um, independence. And it sounds better to the child always, usually when it's in the parent's own words. It's more natural than when we're telling them what to say. Um, so um, then sometimes we do line feeds. We tell them the exact words to say. Um, and you call it a line feed whether the parent complies with it or not, okay? If you feed the line, that's a line feed. The parent may repeat that or, or they may not, depending on the circumstances and the parent. Um, and sometimes it's providing a sentence stem. It's always a little bit more of that than what I just showed you. If they say, good job, and you say, four, that, that one word, that we call a prompt skill. But so if it's providing really the, the framework of a sentence. So um, say you're feeding the cow. The parent says, what animal is that? Because um, the parent's asking a question. The therapist comes over them and feeds a line. You found a black seal. That's a line feed. Okay. Um, tell her, I love the way you're taking turns. L line feed. Okay. Um, the rationale for this is that um, well, we need to track how much we're doing it, and we want to do the minimum necessary putting words in the parent's mouth, putting our words in the parent's mouth. So um, what we generally want to do is, is avoid them as we can, but sometimes when a parent doesn't have any skills and they don't have any rhythm going, it can be a nice way to just get them started and also when they get into trouble if the child's attention is wandering or some naughty behavior is going on sometimes line feeds are really good to put parents back on track okay then there's contingent praise i've mentioned when you tell the you the coach tell a parent to do something and they comply um you want to acknowledge that it can be labeled or an unlabeled it's contingent it's it's marking their compliance Here's some examples on how to code them. Okay. Um, thanks to Christy Warner, who did the first version of this slide, which was really hard, I realized, as I tried to rearrange it. Um, the parent says, good job. That's an unlabeled praise. The coach says, good job of. So that's a prompt skill. Look down here is our coding sheet. I know it, prompt skill. Nice job coloring. So I prompted for a label praise. The parent did it. Okay. So I'm going to mark that that was complied with. You can make a circle. You can make a flag. You can do just, just somehow I denoted that. Um, and then the therapist says, nice label praise. So they followed through with contingent praise. So contingent label praise for a label praise. Carrying on, the therapist is going to feed a line now. Say you put the block on the tower. Okay, so there is a line feed I just gave. The parent complies. You put the block on top. So there's a circle there. Um, that shows me that the parent did repeat the line feed when I said it. I could have just a blank tally mark, which would mean I fed a line, but the parent didn't say it. Maybe they had moved on to do something different. Okay, um, and then the therapist says, great, contingent, unlabeled praise. All right, I wish we had time to really stop and, and discuss if that's making sense to everyone, but we don't have time, on we go. Um, so the rationale is that it's very important that parents are reinforced for following suggestions and directives from the therapist and it models, you know, it's a primary process. Okay, the other thing that we do, hopefully 10% or less, far less, um, constructive feedback for the avoid behaviors. So it's when we identify their use of the avoid skills. 
Um, oop, that sounds a little bit leading. Oh, was that a question? So um, those are, it's pointing out the avoid skills. When we give negatively stated commands, that's considered a coaching error. So if it's negative talk in DPICS, that's going to be a coaching error. Um, in, in, in the coach system. So you would you could say, oops, watch the question. That's constructive feedback. Stop with the questions. That's a, a coaching error. Okay? Um, oops, question. Say you put the cow in the barn. So there's constructive feedback and then a line feed. Um, um, the parent says, no, you're supposed to put it in like this. And the therapist says, remember, in special time, he can do it however he wants. So pointing out the, the leading aspect of it. So that's constructive feedback. Um, and we want to use it sparingly, but sometimes it can be very helpful um, to just let people know what, what you're working on. Um, and so usually, like usually in that example before, rather than saying, oops, that was a question, probably in the first oh, you know, three or four coaching sessions at, like, at, at least when the parent says, you put the cow in the barn, I'm going to say, you put the cow in the barn. I'm going to give it to them in a, in a solid way, feed the line in a, a not questioning form. But if they're not getting that, it might be helpful to give that constructive feedback. That was a question you just asked, um, or your tone tipped up, that kind of thing. So, um, we use it very sparingly and particularly in the first coaching session where you're really trying to get your rapport and rhythm going very sparingly. Okay. Direct commands are when we tell the parent to do something besides one of the three pride skills, um, like um, the child's hitting the wall with a block and you say, just ignore that. Or the child's off task and, or whatever you say to the parent, take a car and imitate. So you're telling them things to do besides the um, major skills. And we use indirect commands, sometimes a suggestion. Um, and it might be granting the parent permission to do something. Like uh, you might say, why don't you color along with her? So you're pulling for imitation. Or the child says, what time is it? And the parent's a little frozen. You can tell her what time it is, giving them permission to, to do. Um, so um, the rationale for coding commands is just just to we're we're trying to do an exhaustive exhaustive coaching system where every verbalization that they make we mark just like you do in DPix. Um, and what we have found from from toying around is that trying to not code something that's not as relevant messes up the coder more to to try to turn it on and turn it off. You just want to code everything and you want everything to have a category. And so we don't do a ton with direct and indirect commands. Um, it, it is interesting feedback to see if you tend to be a therapist who gives only direct commands or a therapist who gives only indirect commands. But in my experience, a nice mix of the two is useful. It's not that one is, is great and the other is, is bad. Um, the indirect commands sometimes incorporate the parent's judgment. If you think that might get out of hand, you can ignore it. Um, and sometimes we need to give clear, direct commands. Um, 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 you know, take your hand off your child's throat. I don't know. So something very um, direct sometimes you need to do. I've never had to do that one, by the way. And then there's other. That's our kind of catch-all for verbalizations that don't fall into another category. So. Um, they don't substantially add to the coaching interaction. Those, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, letting them know the blocks, those toys are clean. Um, um, sometimes we reflect back what a parent says. So the parent says, you put the block on the castle. And the therapist says, you put the block on the castle. That's a behavior description. Okay, that's not concise coaching, but that would be um, another, the reflection part. Um, could you move that box out of the front of the mirror so I can see what's happening? That's another. Okay. All right. Um, then I told you I'd talk to you a little bit about, um, okay, we're going to have 20 minutes to practice. And now we are. I'm going to talk fast. Things to avoid. Our coaching errors. What is a coaching error? There are three types. Mislabeling pride skills or inaccurate feedback, inappropriate suggestions, and criticism or irrelevant remarks. 
Okay, inaccurate feedback would be unintentionally providing inaccurate feedback. So the parent says, good job, you're making a castle. That, DPEX coders know, is an unlabeled praise followed by a behavior description. A common coaching error would be for the um, therapist to say, nice labeled praise. That wasn't actually a labeled praise. Or if the child says, mama, what's that? And the parent um, repeats the question, what's that? And, and the therapist says, great reflection. Um, that was not actually a reflection. Um, making inappropriate suggestions, saying things that violate the principles of CDI or encourage and avoid skill. Tell him he can have that toy when he uses his nice voice. That would be a coaching error. Um, ask her a question. Ask her what she's drawing. That would be a coaching error when we call for the avoid skills. And then critical or um, irrelevant memoirs, Point, pointing out a mistake or error in a critical tone, negative command, negatively stated commands, or way off topic. So stop giving commands. That would be a coaching error. Or where are you planning to have his birthday party? Chit chat through the microphone um, that is totally not moving forward. The um, coaching interaction would be considered a coaching error. Um, and then we look at missed opportunities. We note when the parent gave a good pride skill and the, the coach didn't remark on it, or when the coach, the parent complied with a therapist request for a pride skill and the, um, the coach didn't remark on it. Okay. Um, so the parent says, nice castle. Imagine there's a parent, they just gave a label praise and um, of that, what the child's doing and they say, and the therapist says, now describe what he's doing. So they, they missed noting what the parent did and then they gave a prompt skill. Is that always wrong? No, but it's, it, that's an example. Um, and you're making a tower. He's working really hard to impress you today. That, I think that might be a nice twist. You're just doing something different, but you didn't um, catch that parent giving that behavior description. Depends on what point the parent's at, if you want to do it all the time or, or less. Miscontingent praise, neglecting to praise a parent who follows a coach's statement. So if I say, can you reflect that? And the parent reflects, you did give the dog spots. And I say, I um, say, I love the way you're coloring in the lines. I gave a line feed rather than giving a contingent praise there. So I missed, missed that opportunity. Okay. That's a little bit fancy coding. That's the hardest part probably of the, the system or those missed ones. Um, why do we code when they're using the avoid skills? Well, because immediate feedback on mistakes can, can certainly be helpful. Okay, let me talk to you quickly about the logistics of coach coding. Um, we typically do a five minute sample. You could do it for as, as long as you like, we started this with uh, um, when we were doing um, an online project. And so um, I'm doing online co-therapy and I, five minutes seemed about the right amount that you could refrain from working with the novice therapist, let them coach, and then it would give you time to give some feedback and let them coach some more in that session. So that's why we use a five minute model. Um, and what we generally do is after coding, then the ther after, after the PCIT therapist does DPIX coding, then they usually give the parent a little bit feed of feedback and set their goals. They'll say, your questions were way down today and you were given a lot of unlabeled praises. We're gonna, um, I want you to go ahead with special time. I'm gonna coach you some and we're gonna work on putting labels on all those praises, something like that. Then we give them a minute to warm up, and then we code for five minutes. Again, that's you could do it at other times, but that's our, our method um, typically. Okay, then let's look at how we score the form. Um, the, um, let me see, did I show you a coding sheet yet? Well, okay, I'll get there. Okay, so at the bottom of our coach coding form, we have the scoring right there. So on one page, you can code it and score it. And we have the gateway skills here to the left. Did they do 35? And again, or maybe 
changing to 30, but um, did they talk enough? Was it accurate and error-free, three or fewer coaching errors? Did they praise enough? Did they make their praise at least half specific? So those are the gateway skills. So if any of those are no, then I wouldn't consider this at mastery. But beyond that, we look at the stylistic features and we want to see if they've got four of seven of those. Um, and here the seven are listed over here. Okay. And that's, did they praise something besides the, the three criteria skills? Were they doing enough praise of spontaneous behaviors? Were they praising, conten giving contingent praise? Not too much line feeding, 25% of statements or less were line feeds. Were they describing, did they have some richness in there? Were they describing the child or the parent or the situation? Were they keeping their constructive feedback to a minimum? And did they get in some higher order feeding um, lines, okay? Um, we also do a little qualitative thing, just like at the bottom of a CDI coding sheet. You know, was their so, um, selective attention? How was their selective attention? How was their imitation? How was their in, um, enjoyment, naturalist enthusiasm? So we also have qualitative um, ratings of did the coach work on what their stated goals were, and how was their warmth and enthusiasm? Um, there too, so a, a little qualitative rating, okay? Um, I, I did slip in a little bit of data. Um, nope, I took it out. Okay, um, it was just to say which of the things people were meeting most, and um, people are having the hardest time with that 35 statements, whereas, so that's why I'm thinking it might be a little bit too tough. People are doing, the next thing that people, um, do best, um, it, the next thing people struggle with is contingent praise. Um, and then the descriptive, the higher order, higher order, and the descriptive stuff. So the more kind of high level stuff is what is the, as you would expect, we develop the basic skills and then we add others. Okay, now, I can't see this very well on my screen. I don't know, Steve, how it's um, how we can if how everybody else is seeing it because I've got a busy screen. Um, it, this is looking at. Thank you. That's better. Thanks so much. Okay, so we start off higher order statements. This was a new coach at CDI one. Um, they gave no higher order statements. They gave one description of um, the situation. They gave two label praises of label praise. They gave one label praise for reflection, and they gave one praise for something other than those three skills. They gave four unlabeled praises. They made two prompt statements, and the parent complied with one of those. They gave one line feed, which the parent did not repeat because it's not circled, and they gave um, one constructive feedback and one direct command. So in five minutes of coding, if you add all that up, they gave 14 coaching statements. They made one coaching error. And, oh, yeah, thank you, Steve, for following with the cursor. I'm doing my private little cursor here, here in my own private little office. Um, and they, um, so... They missed their contingent praise. The one time that the parent obeyed them, they did not give a contingent praise. And um, they made one inappropriate suggestion. So if we can come down to the scoring part of it, what we've got here, they didn't make 35 statements, so that's a no on pacing, on total statements. They only had eight praises altogether, so that was a no they had half of their praise was unlabeled. They had four unlabeled out of eight. So that's a yes, it's our minimum. They barely met the minimum because it says um, half or more were labeled and they were exactly at half, so they squeaked in. They had fewer than three coaching errors, so they made that. And then of our seven stylistic features, they got three out of the seven. They um, did not miss too much spontaneous, and they did not line feed, 
and they did not do constructive feedback. This almost they were getting points for being quiet, um, honestly. Okay, let's look at. Um, oh, there, look at that. I had made it bigger for you. Sorry. Um, but we did it. Let's look at a more um, advanced coach. Okay. Here you can see they said a lot more stuff. They did 54 statements in five minutes. Um, and all the tallies that um, they've done, they had zero coaching errors. They gave, they praised 27 times. Looking at that, I can track that they praised for label praise four times. They praised for behavior description four times. They praised um, reflection six times. There it is. And they praised other eight times. Okay. So we've got, and then they gave five unlabeled praises. So they look good there. They gave 27 total. And so 22 out of their 27 were labeled. So they met that criteria. And then coming over to the qualitative features, they nailed seven out of seven. Let me see if I had them. Yeah, here we go. Um, here's the scoring down here. Um, praising other things, they did it eight times. Looking at the, the stylistic features, um, they missed two. Um, well, it says they did zero. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so they didn't miss any spontaneous remarks. They did contingent praise for five out of eight opportunities. They fed six coaching statements out of 54 total, so they're well fewer than that 25%. They did eight descriptions of the child's situation or skills, and they gave one constructive feedback out of 54 statements. So not too much constructive feedback. And then they did, um, we look for at least three higher order statements in all coaching sessions beyond number one. Number one, when you're kind of still trying to teach them what the skills are, we look for at least one higher order that ties it to the point of it. Okay. All right. Everybody's got it now, right? Let's go. What we're going to do is put up a coded transcript, and then we're going to play through a tape. And so you should hear the words and follow along from the transcript. Okay? And the codes are going to appear here as we go. And I'll try not to talk over it too much. Cutting the mushroom. 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 Stop cutting the mushroom. We're not coding yet because this is the one minute warm up. You want to put salad dressing? The pizza? The pizza? Here's pizza. Here's pizza. And Steve, you're going to scroll for us, right? Okay, it's been a minute, so we start coding. Prompt skill, contingent unlabeled praise. Sitting down, with the dressing. sitting down. Line feet, compliance. Now you're sprinkling on your grandma. Miss contingent praise. You can just serve grandma. I gotta put you in there. I gotta put you in there. Steve, on my screen, so the transcript is cut off a little bit. Like I don't know if we can start getting some things to cut. Mine's cutting the mushroom. Mine's cutting the mushroom. Where is it? Yeah, where is it? Yeah. Are you having your stuff? 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 Are you having your stuff?
and just get more until it gets more than two. Get out! Get out! Start talking about yeah, what you do, yeah. what you do. I'm cleaning all the can probably agree this coach is missing a lot of opportunities. The mother has given some spontaneous pride skills and didn't get reinforced for it. The coach seems like they're, I think they're trying to coach and ignore, although to me it seems like the child would be easily engaged in the play. Um, they're kind of just saying, just keep, just keep playing. Um, there, you can see the missed opportunities for spontaneous. You can see when they feed a line, this parent is complying with it and they're not getting reinforced for it. So they're not setting up a good working relationship with this parent. Um, and, and it's just, you know, and the coach isn't coaching enough and the child's starting to wander off because he's not getting enough CDI skills. I don't mean to be like raining down on the coach, but that's easy to see. It's a new coach and they're not sure what to do. What I need is a way to give this coach some objective feedback or for that coach to evaluate themselves and see how can I improve. So I just want to, to hold that up to you. Okay, we can carry on, Steve. Chicken, chicken. Thank you for sitting down. Oh, you've got a chicken leg now. Chicken leg now. You've got two chicken legs. I don't need it. 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 I just keep playing. Just keep playing. Just keep playing. Just keep playing. So direct command. We're not calling for any of the CDI skills still. Let's say you found two cones. Then are no cones. Oh, there's snow cones. Line feed Miss Contingent Grace. Are they cherry? Are they cherry? Get them up. Get them up. Just keep playing till he comes back to the table. Mmm, I found this. I found this. It would be helpful here to prompt for some CDI skills, right? Instead of just general keep playing. Pick up my green peppers. Green peppers, green peppers. Go ahead and answer. Go ahead and answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You didn't hear what you said. I love you. I love you too. I'm still gonna have chicken. I'm still gonna have chicken. I like chicken. I like chicken. I like chicken fingers. How about a cucumber? How about a cucumber? Some celery. Some celery. Ooh, we've got some chocolate. Ooh, we've got some chocolate. Here's chocolate. Here's chocolate. I don't. I want the oven. I want the oven. These are my. So 
you can do it. If you think he's done with the food, then start putting it up. And then you don't have the Mr. Potato. Hey, 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 Mr. Potato. Okay, now pulling on your, so that was the end of the five minutes of coach coding. Um, Steve, I think we have the tally sheet there for what we've just coded. Thank you so much for lending your technical wizardry. It's a, um, it's a separate document. It's document number four. And um, so the things that uh, if you don't have it handy, I can find it here. I hope I sent it to you. Um, so again, this gives us a way to give very specific feedback to the therapist. And we code ourselves here. You can always code your own coaching. You know, just turn on your iPhone and record yourself for five minutes. Um, I'll say in the interest of finishing up here, because I know we're about to run out of time, people who are interested in this can contact me and I'm happy to share um, our material. I think you've already got the PowerPoints from today. And um, Oh, okay, you give me share screen. Okay, hang on a second. Let me find. One second. There it is. And it's on there, Beb. Okay, I've got it on. Oh, good. Thanks. Okay, so. Um... <laughs> nice prompt skill. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, if you look at what this parent did, there was zero higher order, there was one description of the child. Only, sadly, if you're only going to make 16 statements, it would be great if most of them were praises. Um, but there was only one praise, and it was unlabeled. There was one prompt skill, which the parent complied with on this one. I underlined it. That means they did it. There were four unlabeled praises. I mean, four, four line feeds. The parent did them all, I believe. And then there were a number of direct commands and indirect commands, so kind of instructing the parent what to do around the room. No coaching errors. There were two missed. The parent did give two behavior descriptions and um, they, they were not noted. And um, the two times, okay, yes, yeah, so those, the unlabeled, the line feeds were not complied with. I think because each time she did it, she did it as a question. But so the, um, the prompting skill and one line feed were complied with and neither of them were praised. Um, she identified her goal was going to be behavior descriptions and um, there was very little effort to, um, like the two times the parent actually did it, the therapist didn't reinforce that. Um, and so kind of not great qualitative ratings. Um, but what we could look at with this this um, coach, so they had 16 talks, they had zero errors. So you could say to that coach, the things you're saying are not wrong. You don't, you know, don't worry about putting yourself out there. You were getting in some unlabeled praises. You were noticing when it was when she was doing something well. Um, but we need to pull. We we want to praise. We want to be listening to everything the parent says, and we want to praise her. When you tell her to do something and she does it, you want to praise it. So that would be the, you know, some of the, the feedback that this coach might get from this session. I did kind of a low level one because I didn't want us to have too, too intense um, coding to do for our first time out. So I know we're at the hour and um, 
I know it was fast and furious, but thank you so much for allowing me to share my favorite little coach system. And I can be on for a few more minutes if there are chat items or anything yes, else. Thank you so much for your generous uh, time and opportunity.